Pressing the newsmakers for the honest answers. It's the Mike Hosking Breakfast with Bailey's Real Estate. Altogether better across residential, commercial, rural and property services. News Talk ZB. Morning to you, 7 past 7. So it turns out Michael Woodhouse had it right. The women whose trip to Wellington is seeing the government's entire quarantine strategy fall to pieces in front of our eyes did stop. And they did meet people, and on the back of those revelations, the flood is now on of those in quarantine, not tested, not isolated, let out with no testing at all. Director General of Health, Ashley Bloomfield's back with us. Good morning. Good morning, Mike. Have you quit yet? No, I haven't quit. Uh, I just want to say uh, I'm not planning to quit. I've uh, worked very hard as as the ministry, as people know, over the last few months to keep New Zealanders safe. I'm proud of what New Zealanders have achieved. We've had high expectations of ourselves um, to, to achieve what we have, and, you know, it's clear... Um, with the slip up at um, the Auckland quarantine that we didn't meet those expectations. I'm sorry about that. As I said yesterday, I've owned that. I've um, taken responsibility and in particular taken responsibility for making sure it's fixed. So we're focused on that. Why does no one in this government ever get held to account for anything? Well, I'm not part of the government, but I'm certainly putting my hand up uh, as being responsible for making sure the system works. There was clearly a, a, a gap in the implementation of the testing in Auckland. Uh, I wasn't aware of that. As soon as I became aware, we've uh, made sure no one leaves uh, managed isolation or quarantine for any reason unless they've had a test. And as soon as I found out about that, I made sure that was the, the rule and that's applied. Since, uh, Why weren't you uh, making sure it was the rule from day one? It's so well, simple. It's yeah. so simple. Well, uh, we we had uh, processes in place. The, remembering we moved to alert level one very quickly. Clearly, there was a gap in the implementation, and as I say, made, made sure that that gap is now closed, and it's really clear you, what you the make it sound like. It's some sort of military operation. No one leaves the building unless they test negative. Beginning, middle, and end. Uh, well, I'm not a military person, but uh, that's what we're we're doing now, and um, that's uh, the expectation. It's been really clear, so I can provide that assurance and. I'm also, I will but start but to go back and, and look and see, and see what, ha- what happened in this case. Well, what happened is they didn't get tested. We all know what happened. Yeah, they didn't get tested before they left, and what we're focused on now is making sure, A, everyone does get tested, and B, if there was any risk that the uh, two women may have presented, that that is being managed, and we're very focused Just on Just quickly that. on the women themselves, did they lie to you, or did you not ask enough questions? Look, they didn't lie. It's very common in these situations, remembering they had just lost a parent. They were um, distraught. They were on their way down to Wellington. Uh, and that's why, our, uh, to, to be with the remaining parent, that is why our public health units do do follow-up interviews. It's not uncommon for them to elicit other So you're telling me a person who's got one job during the day to go from point A to point B, when you say, did you meet anybody along the way, given that's all they did that day, they can't remember whether they met anybody that day? and you trust them to say that that was the truth as opposed to a lie? Well, look, the, the information was elicited at a subsequent interview. It was while they were trying to get out of Auckland. They got lost, went the wrong way and went north instead of south. They asked for assistance from their friends. There was a very short interaction to make sure they got pointed in the right direction. And actually, the public health unit found this out on Tuesday night didn't tell us till yesterday afternoon after I inquired, and the reason is they did not think that the interaction was material. I said, anything is material, what? and uh, let's, let's act decisively. Are but they is, thick? Yeah. Is that the problem? Yeah. Are you dealing with thick no. people? They didn't let you know. They didn't think it was important. I mean, what, what sort of brain power is going into that? Because they were judging that on, based on, these are very experienced people, based on the nature of the interaction, that it did not present any risk. I've said belt and braces will put these people in self-isolation and they had already been tested. We're expecting the test results today as well. On June 9, you said that people would be tested for COVID on their third and twelfth day in isolation, whether they were symptomatic or not. That's not happening. Not only isn't that happening, it's voluntary. It is happening now and I've made it clear there was some question about whether they could be compelled to under the existing order. I've made it really clear that I will not deem anyone as low risk before they leave unless they have returned a negative test. So, so that becomes mandatory now? Absolutely. It has ever since, as I said, Tuesday when I found out about this and gave that instruction out to all managed isolation facilities. What about all the endless stories we're hearing in the last 24 hours at the Grand Mercure and other hotels where people are having parties, candles are getting blown out, groups are getting mixed, no one's getting tested, everyone's leaving with no testing? 
Well, as I say, since Tuesday, everyone is tested before they go. The operation of the um, of the hotels is uh, is, is done by uh, Commodore Digby, as was announced yesterday. Air Commodore Digby, as was announced by the Prime Minister and Mike Bush. And I know their teams are looking into any any complaints or any issues that arise. And look, I've also heard reports of very strict um, uh, enforcement of the of the mixing and min- no mixing and mingling. So um, any reports like that, we will absolutely follow up. I'll, I'll hand those over to. Given the stories we've heard of the birthday parties and the candles being blown out and people not getting tested and people leaving, do you have any idea of how many people have been in quarantine and have left with no tests? Uh, what we're doing, and actually, of course, in the case of um, the two women here, which are the first two positive ca- uh, cases that we've had for some time. Remember, we've had ni- over 19,000 people Ashley, through Ashley, you only have positive cases if you test. How many people have left hotels do you know with no test? I don't know, but I can. You uh, don't we, know. We are implementing the, uh, a, a, as I said, everybody uh, in the hotel does not leave uh, for any reason. That's as of now. now. That's as of now. Up until yesterday's calamity, yeah. how many people left hotels without being tested? Yeah. Look, Mike, it's not a calamity, but just let me oh, be clear come, here. Ashley, it's come on. Day. Can you tell but me how many things- people left the hotels with no test? Everybody completes their 14 days isolation. That is the mainstay of protecting our border. And do they get tested? On the 9th of June, we have been adding in testing at day three and day 12 as a belt and brace. No, you haven't. As I said, right no, you haven't. Start, You've okay, said you let, have. Let me, let me finish, Mike. Right at the start, as I said, the implementation of that, there were some gaps. I've said I will make sure that the system is in place, that, that, doesn't, uh, that no one does leave unless they have been tested. But it hasn't been and in that place. That's the happened. point. So the question is simple. How many people have left the hotel without being tested? I do not know that number. But How no on earth can you not know that number? Since the second of, uh, since uh, two days ago, unless they've been tested, Mike, and that's what I'm taking responsibility so for. So there's potentially, what, half a dozen, a dozen, 20, 30, uh, 50, 100, or we Mike. literally don't know? Let me go back. We have had managed isolation in place for several months with people going in and and, and, uh, and undertaking 14 days of that isolation without any testing. We added the testing in. Once we moved to alert level one, we moved rapidly. It didn't get implemented Ashley, route, you as didn't, well as it you could You didn't have. implement and the testing is. because yeah. we've got numerous stories of people not being tested. Look, uh, Mike, just to reiterate... It has now been fully implemented, and I'm providing that assurance. And my team and I are very focused on making sure that happens. Let me come to the Auditor-General. Why was PPE? Basically, you lied to the country. You said there was plenty of PPE, and you're on a war footing, and there was no problem getting it, and there was no problem with distribution. The Auditor-General says that's not true. I don't think that's quite what he does say, Mike. What he says was that... Can I quote you then? You had no idea how much personal protective equipment you had, how much was needed what was expired, how it should be distributed. His words, not mine. So our PPE was held on both national stocks and out in DHBs. As soon as uh, COVID-19 came along, we started to look at exactly what we did have and made sure that we had enough PPE for the whole health system. We did not run out of PPE, let me be clear. We had good supply of PPE, we had enough onshore and we got more in. Secondly, what he does say in the report is when it became apparent that the distributed way of getting this out to people was not working. The ministry gripped it up and has sorted it out nationally. And I'm proud of what we did there. We actually sorted this out and we now have a national distribution system. No national stock take since 2016, is that true? That hadn't been, that's right, that hadn't happened. Right. As part of the no central oversight at all. Have. This is a devolved health system. As soon as we realised there was an issue, um, uh, you know, we, this is one of the things we worked very hard on was getting that centralised and making sure that we could distribute it effectively from the centre. And we did not run out and we've got very good stocks and supplies. And given all that we've just heard, you still don't feel you should quit? Oh, look, Mike, just to reiterate, you know, this has been a global pandemic. It continues. We've been deeply committed to keeping New Zealand safe. I'm proud of what we've achieved now, and that commitment remains stronger than ever, and we're doubling down our efforts to keep New Zealand safe. All right, appreciate your time, Ashley Bloomfield. It is 16 past seven.